Hello there and welcome to another Bow Beats video and today I have something special. Minimalist and Eurorack. Those are two words that may or may not fit very well together. I'll let you be the decider of that as you know I'm more of a maximalist if you will. I have an absurdly large Eurorack case that I use more like a library for modules than just one big instrument. But I do find myself in situations where I want something more compact, something more focused and I also think that that's usually the best route to go if you're starting out with Eurorack, starting out with something small, compact, where you can quickly get going creating music with it. So small compact systems I think is the best way to go for most beginners. So I teamed up with Too Many Synths, my buddy Arjan, and we created uh, this case here. It's a pretty small Eurorack case. I'm not here to sell you on it. This is more a passion project that me and Ariane put together because I wanted something really small that could fit easily on my lap for example or just on my main desk. So it's more of a laptop sized case. You can see here it's, it's very slim. And in today's video we're gonna take a look at this case here, what makes it special. We're gonna make some music using this case and I'm also gonna talk about some of the negatives because this design here has some drawbacks as well that's good to know about. And like I said, I'm not here to sell you on this. This is not some official Bow Beats case. I think Ariane has one more of these cases that's already made. I think you can make more if you want to, but I don't get anything out of it. We just teamed up and made this design. And I also teamed up with Constant Labs that makes this one U power module that I use to power the entire case. So let's uh, check it out. The idea for this case was to create a really small form factor case, something reminiscent of a tiny laptop, something that you could easily put on a small table. So it couldn't be too wide and it couldn't be too deep. And this of course creates limitations in terms of how much rack space you can have and also what kind of power solutions you can have. The case itself is 60 HP wide, which means that you can fit a Moog Mother 32, a Subharmonicon or DFAM in each of the three U slots. It also has one, one U slot and some fairly unique bonus rack space that gives us even more space to work with, even though it's a really small case. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let's take a look at the power solution that I got for this case. So I got the 1U power module from Constant Labs and they have a great reputation for making high quality power solutions for Eurorack and two of their flying bus boards for a total of 30 power sockets. Now that might be a little overkill, but as you will come to see, this case can hold a lot more modules than you might first think. And here I'm trying to film something um, cool for you and yeah, that happened. <laughs> the power module did survive, however. And now we can finally talk about that bonus rack space, because as you can see, because the DFAM is so shallow, it's not very deep, it means that we can put pretty much any 1U module that we want on the front of the unit. Now this is bonus rack space and is not ideal for any kind of module, but as you will see here, using it for the power module is actually very efficient. So by utilizing this bonus rack space, we actually have a lot more HP to work with for utility modules like power for example, for IO modules, and maybe something else. You know, let me know in the comments what you think you could put in that bonus rack space. So after a bit of work, this is what my first little build looks like and let's have a listen to what it sounds like. <laughs>
Next up, let's take a closer look at the bonus rack space and what you could use it for. Now you might rightly wonder, why on earth did you put 3U rack space on the back of the case? And it was actually Ariane's brilliant idea of doing this. So it's bonus rack space that you can use for utility modules like for example inputs and outputs. I put a master EQ there, something that I won't tweak a lot while I'm playing around with the U rack. So it's basically up to my imagination what I use it for, and it's great for those situations when you go, oh, I need 10 or 20 extra HP for this particular module, but I don't have it in the tiny case. Well, you do on the back. So it's not something that you factor into every build, it's more a bonus, I'd say. And a bonus of the bonus rack space is that you can now open up the back of the case and have easy access to the power sockets, which I found quite useful, to be honest. Now when it comes to utilizing the bonus rack space, the bonus 3U space on the back can basically be used for any modules. There's not a lot of clearance issues. Now the front and top 1U depends a lot on what kind of modules you have in the case already, how deep they are, so you can't expect to fit any combination of modules, you have to do a bit of planning. And here's a comparison with the nifty case, as you can see it's both wider and deeper than my case. And here's another comparison to give you a sense of scale. Here's the 6U Rack Brute from Arturia. So we're talking similar sizes in terms of HP, but of course the Rack Brute is a lot larger. So what modules did I use for this first build? Well, I'm using the Moog DFAM here. And on the front, you can see I'm using the 1U Power. Then I have the 1U Distortion Module Guillotine from uh, Ritual Electronics. A 1U Attenuator Module that I also use as a mixer. I then have an Eventide Delay and a Joystick from Erica Synths that I can use to control various parameters of other modules. And then we have the Maestro, which is just an amazing modulation module. And lastly, a Wave Folder, the Wrinkler from Swedish Noise Lab. And for the top one U, I haven't mounted anything yet, but as you can see there's a lot of space, just be a little careful with the clearance. And on the back I have a passive multiplier, a master EQ that I just set and leave, and then I have the DivKid LFO module, also very easy just to set up and leave, it's also easy to reach around and, and just tweak it. So I actually added some stuff to this first build, for example I added this little multiplier here on the top, I think that's excellent usage of the top rack space for utility modules like the multiplier, and on the back here I put my kick drum module because I couldn't fit it on the front, so ideally I'd want it on the front, but yeah suddenly I found myself needing a kick drum to the DFAM setup so I could add it on the back, so that's kind of how you use this bonus. How many times have I said bonus in today's video? I don't quite know, but yeah that's one way of using the bonus rack space. A question a lot of people ask about Urac is can you actually use it to create music? And yes, of course the answer is yes, yes, definitely. So to show you, I created some cool little drum sequences on this setup here and I sampled it into Mishina Plus and made this little beat here. I started by sampling a kick drum. Then I created a percussive sequence on the DFAM. I made a snare and hi-hat type sound using the DFAM. And a second percussive sequence using the DFAM. I threw in a chime-like synth sound from the Machina, and this is what I ended up with. Next up let's talk negatives, I've been using this for a couple of weeks and there are a few things to note. So you can look here, the angle here is very steep, it means that if I put something in this socket here and in this socket, the cables might actually clash, so they might hit each other. That's why you might want low profile cables for some of these connections, now it's not a, like a major issue, but it does happen from time to time. Now another thing to keep in mind is that depending on the depth of the modules that you put here, well it determines how deep modules you can put here and 
up here in the bonus rack space. Which brings me to the third thing, and that is of course that this extra space here, while nice, while you can fit pretty much any module here, is of course like super contextual. It depends a lot on your situation. It's it's not something I would like recommend you factoring into builds. Like, yeah, I have all of this space. Let's put a lot of stuff here that I'm gonna tweak a lot. Like it's more for the extra modules. You know, I have this, for example, this LFO here. Like I'll just set it, it's just one knob that I'll tweak and then I'll leave it. So it's very easy. I can just reach around here on the back and, and tweak it. But for other things, it's of course super impractical. So, I mean, it, it's a fun idea. It works pretty well in practice, as long as you keep the limitations in mind, I'd say. So a fun project, I think. So let me know in the comment section what you thought about this case, how you liked the design. And of course, big thank you to Ariane from Too Many Synths who helped me design this. This was his idea, of course, with the bonus rack space, and my idea was more to have this slim form factor, the, the, the narrow case, if you will, something laptop-like. And also big thank you to Constant Labs who provided the power solution. I'll link both of these companies down below. And as always, have a great day. Talk to you later.